Okay, everyone, we are going to do a quick housekeeping. Um, please make sure to mute your line if you are just listening, as it helps background noise for everyone. This presentation is being recorded. Please uh, turn off your video during the session as this helps our viewers with low bandwidth. Uh, we encourage questions. We will be monitoring the chat, so please type questions into the chat. We do have live captions and available, so on your Zoom menu, the closed caption button will turn your captions on and off. Our next session is Captioning Workflows with Liesl Mandrona. And Liesl is an instructional designer with the Accessibility Center. She has lots of experience working with faculty, staff, and students with disabilities. And um, she is going to present captioning workflows today. So I will stop sharing and Liesl, go ahead and take over the presentation. Okay, fantastic. All right, we are on time. Okay, so I'm just I'm just going to um, share my video real quick and just say hi, have a face to a name, um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and shut the video off just to conserve that bandwidth. All right, so I'll go ahead and share screen. Here we go. Okay, welcome everyone to captioning workflows. So today I'm going to talk about two different types of videos that we'll encounter or your faculty will encounter videos that we own, that we've created, and videos that we don't own. Um, and we'll also talk about some other items as well. Um, uh, video accessibility, the benefits of transcripts, how to leverage auto captioning with various authoring programs. We have about three or four today. And solutions for inc incorporating audio descriptions into your videos. So audio descriptions, I know this is fairly new to a lot of folks and um, you know, with all things considered, the pandemic and many things that our faculty must know, um, audio description is, is a very important now that we've pivoted online. Um, and I'll go ahead and talk about that more in a bit. Okay, and we are actually going to save many of our questions towards the end of our session. So if you have any questions, feel free to, um, in the chat, um, uh, go ahead and ask your question and Angela will collect all of the questions and then she'll read it aloud during the, the question section. Okay, all righty, let's get going. All right, so today I'm going to talk about um, some of the accessibility standards for media. And um, this is from WCAG. So we're going to talk about audio only and video only recorded videos, um, um, audio description, how to incorporate that, uh, live videos, okay? All right, so we've created this table here to help break down what do we need depending on the media type. So we have pre recorded videos. Okay, and this is just MP3s. Let me go ahead and, and pull out my handy dandy draw tool because it's kind of a lot all at once. Um, let's choose a friendly color. Okay, so we have pre recorded audio video. So that's usually, or audio that's podcasts, MP3s. Do we need a transcript? Do we need captions? Do we need audio description? Okay, so if we have an MP3, it would be nice to have a transcript. No, you don't need captions. No, you don't need an audio description. Um, and just to back up a little bit, what is audio description? Just briefly, audio description is. Um, it's describing the on-screen actions in between dialogue. So when you have a video, if there are some on-screen actions or something on the screen that's, that's important, we'll need to provide an audio description. So that's what audio description is, okay? Um, then we have pre-recorded video only. So this is just like silent movies, animated illustrations. We'll see this. Um, we'll see this in, say, for example, I've seen this in art classes where we have the instructor show students a type of, you know, painting method. Right. Uh, most of the time, I'll see this in, in its silence. Right, and they're just kind of drawing on a canvas. Right. 
Um, do we need a transcript? Yes, we need a text file that describes the visual elements. Do we need captions? No. Um, do we need audio description? Yes. So we need an audio file that describes the visual elements. So if we have a video, okay, um, um, say for example, the faculty that's painting on the canvas, um, we could weave in that audio description. Um, so uh, when we're recording the video, the, the faculty can actually you know, describe what they are doing on screen as they are recording versus in post-production adding audio descriptions later. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but ideally, if it's a silent video or an animated illustration, if there's on-screen action, uh, it would be great while recording, having faculty describe what is on the screen. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clear my drawings and we'll just go through um, a couple of examples of audio um, or different medias, okay? This is the audio only example. So we have an MP3 uh, embedded on that Canvas page, right? Um, and down below, you can add the transcript. You could add the transcript directly on that Canvas page here. Um, if you have more than one presenter or one narrator, you would, uh, you would let the folks know, um, our students know who is speaking if it's relevant. Okay, so this is an audio example. Again, it's an MP3. Um, it, you know, you can place the transcript on the Canvas page or you can include it as a Word document, okay, that students can download. So either or, or you could do both. All right, so our next example is a video only example. All right, and this is knee joint range of movement. So just take a second to watch this video. Okay, and feel free in the chat if you want to try to describe this video. For those that um, specialize in physiology, this might be a little bit easier. Okay, watching the video, Fantastic, we get a lot of visual information, but we will need to include a transcript, right? Pure silence. Now, let me show you an example of this video only example transcript, okay? And this is in notes, okay? So you can provide notes um, in the form of notes, but um, I think uh, Word, Word documents are a little bit more universal, okay? Um, so we have the title in this transcript, the title, knee joint, range of mo movement, 3D medical um, animation. And then there is a description of what is going on. So silent video demonstrating flexion and extension of the left lower leg around the knee joint. The articular surface of the knee joint are, are shown covered in cartilage the video then shows the quadriceps muscle group action during the flexion and extension phases along with the origin and insertion of the patellar tendon, okay? So we're describing what is happening um, on screen in this transcript, okay? So again, you can place this underneath the video, um, underneath the video um, and also as a Microsoft Word document. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yes, you can. Um, and it might be helpful as well, uh, just, just for good instructional design, if we have a video, okay, say we have a video that is embedded on a Canvas page, um, ideally we would like to write some description introducing that video, right? So why is this video important, okay? So giving some context in the content above the video makes sense. It's almost like if you're in an on-ground course, you wouldn't just, you know, put, put the, you know, turn on the video and then just walk away. No, no, we would stand there. We would um, describe to the students 
okay, this is, I'm going to show you a video. It's about X, Y, and Z. It's important because da, 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 da. Okay. And then you can have the video on the Canvas page. Okay. And then underneath it, you can provide the transcript. You can write directly on that Canvas page. And then you can also provide it as a Word document as well. Okay. All righty. So let me go ahead and clear. All. Let's just zoom right through. Okay, uh, let's see. So continuing on, let me go ahead and grab that drawing tool again. Now we'll talk about pre-recorded video with audio. Okay, pre-recorded video with audio. Um, so this is lecture videos, right? Do we need a transcript? Yes, we recommend it. We recommend that. Right. So we want to be kind of proactive. Um, if we do have a student who um, comes in with a disability, we don't really know what range of disability that student might have. Um, and for most alternative formats, we always start with a Word document. So keep that in mind. We always start with a Word document. Um, so highly recommend being proactive. That'll help our DSPS office. Hopefully that document will be accessible. Right. So we'll have some headings in there. Um, you know, if, if we have different speakers, right? Um, captions, do we need captions? Yes, absolutely. And it would be great uh, to also have audio descriptions. We will definitely need that as well, okay? So transcripts, we, yes, we recommend that. We definitely need captions and audio description, okay? Now for live video and audio, so this is for, for um, Zoom, uh, Zoom lectures, right? Um, do we need a transcript? No, right, this is live, we're all ad-libbing. Captions, yes, okay. Um, so you can, so if we have a student who is identified, most likely you'll have um, um, someone that will be captioning, a professional that will be captioning the course. In Zoom, you can also uh, turn on a setting you have to turn on a setting in order to generate the transcript that you can letter, later edit, okay? Um, so yes, having captioning is great. Do you need audio description? Um, no, you don't need audio description, but you can describe what is on screen and you should, right? Um, so if you are saying, for example, Okay, students, um, let's pretend we have like a, uh, you know, uh, like a, a slide and there's, you know, some sort of process going on, right? Okay. Um, you might want to introduce to the students, okay, students, today we are going to talk about, you know, uh, I don't know, the Krebs cycle, okay? Um, and it's important because, and then you kind of do your description, why it's important, right? Uh, and then it, it, on the complex image, instead of saying like, okay, here, this is what happens. And then here, this is what happens. But remember, um, you want to look over there um, and in consideration, right? So instead of saying here and there, which is not very descriptive, it would be a lot more helpful for your students to just describe uh, what is happening on screen. So if there is some text, right, go ahead and read it out loud. Okay, and keep this in mind, a lot of students, okay, and this is what I'm hearing from faculty across um, um, California, okay, across the state, I work with different colleges up and down California, a lot of faculty are telling me that students are actually watching your videos first, okay, no, they are, I promise, they are watching your videos first, okay, hopefully, and then um, to study, they will listen to your videos, okay? They will listen to your videos. So it would be very helpful to incorporate that audio description, okay? Um, they, they will listen to your video as if it was a podcast, okay? They might be, um, who knows, they might be folding laundry. They might be doing some tours around the house. So they might not be able to watch your video, but they are listening to your video. So if you could incorporate that audio description, um, you know, the, your students will be a lot better. So it, it helps everyone to have that audio description. Okay. All righty. So I'll just go ahead and clear that. All right. 
So let me go ahead and hopefully I've shared correctly. Let me just um, share, new share, share sound, perfect. Okay. Um, so we have, okay, so let me share with you this example. Um, what is happening on screen? Okay, what is audio description? So let's, let's experience this together. From the creators of Tangled and Wreck-It Ralph, Disney. A carrot-nosed coal-eyed snowman shuffles up to a purple flower peeping out of deep snow. Ooh, hello. <laughs> he takes a deep sniff. <sighs> His nose lands on a frozen pond. A reindeer looks up and pants like a dog. Okay. So in the chat, in the chat, um, what what do you think is happening? Is any does anyone does anyone does this video or this movie trailer sound familiar to anyone? Do we know what's happening? Okay. Yes. So we know exactly what's happening. And I, I just, I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Can, I, can everyone see this? I just pulled the video. I just pulled the video. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So it describes and it describes what is happening on screen. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pull another video. Um, just to give you another example. Okay. To describe actually what is audio description. Just watch a movie and close your eyes and you can't follow most movies with just listening. Be like, who's that? What's going on? Police lights flash on the front of the buyer's house as Officer Callahan stands outside with Joyce and Jonathan. Audio description is a description of the action that's going on in between the dialogue. Inside the dark house, Hopper walks down the hallway with a flashlight. For, for blind people, having that audio description, it becomes their eyes. I, I, I definitely say Orange is the New Black, Stranger Things and Game of Thrones have been my audio description highlights. Eleven closes her eyes. Okay, so that is audio description. So I thought instead of telling you what it is, I can show you with that video. Okay, so audio dis uh, description is describing what is on screen. Okay, um, and before we go into the weeds uh, a little bit, um, closed captioning is the text that appears that describes what is on what is being spoken. Okay, what is being spoken? So this could be relevant sounds. This could be the dialogue between um, between characters. Okay, so that's closed captioning. So audio description is describing what is on screen, what is happening on screen. Okay, so for instructional content, it's it's really important that we describe information as much as we can. So if you describe, so if you're watching a Zoom. Um, or if you're creating a Zoom lecture, okay, um, you want to describe what is on screen. That is audio description, okay? That is audio description. And we have um, this excellent uh, um, service or this, um, sorry, this um, 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 uh, resource, uh, DCMP description key. So let me go ahead and add that in the chat here. Okay, uh, the DCMP provides services. It's designed to support and improve the academic achievement for all of our students who are blind, visually impaired, uh, deaf, hard of hearing, or um, deaf and blind. So the DCMP is actually funded by the US Department of Education and the administration of the National Association, Association of the Deaf. So um, if you explore a little bit more, it actually has a breakdown of different types of disciplines and how to describe, how to approach them, okay? All right, so let's go next, okay? All right, what's next? Auto, auto captions. Okay, so auto captions can still be used. Okay, let me move this a little bit. Okay, can still be useful. Um, we do have this uh, workflow. So this is our first workflow. Um, you can upload um, your content into YouTube or actually it depends what you're using. Okay, um, but auto captioning can be good. 
it, it provides the foundation. Uh, so you don't have to, from scratch, rewrite all the captions. It's a good foundation. You can edit the captions from there. And I'll go ahead and show you different types of uh, authoring programs that you can use. So th this is sort of like the workflows. So we have Canvas Studio, Canvas Media Player, Zoom, and YouTube. Okay. I'm just going to switch over my, um, my uh, screen here. Can everybody see my new screen? I just swipe the desktop. Yep, we can. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start with Canvas Studio. All right, Canvas Studio. Uh, let's see. So we jump into Studio. Okay, so Canvas Studio. Uh, some some institutions might have this enabled. Uh, it's a really great tool that allows you to add some um, interactions on your lecture videos. So. You know, I know sometimes our, our lectures could be about like what an hour long, right? Um, if you're using uh, Can or Studio, this is really great because you can add quiz questions. So there's three different types. I think there's multiple choice and some other types of interactions that you can use. Um, um, but you can also use Studio to add uh, closed captioning. All right, so this within Canvas, this is my workspace. Let me go ahead and pull up my annotation tool. So if you haven't used it before, um, if your institution has enabled Studio, it's located uh, on your global navigation pane. It's on your global navigation pane on the left-hand side. Okay, so when you select that, you get this workspace with all of your videos. And there's a couple of things that you can do. You can record a video. Let me just move this. Um, here. Okay, so you can record a video from scratch, or you can add a video, okay? Either or, um, once you upload or once you have that video in your workspace, you can add captions, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. So we'll just kind of jump in, okay? So I just selected the video, and down below the video, there's a couple of tabs, there's four details, comments, insights, and captions. You'll select captions, and you have two choices here. You have two choices. You can either um, select the captions request, so this is the auto-generated captioning feature, okay, or you can upload your own caption, okay. So those are two things you can do. Um, unfortunately, when you upload your own um, captioning, okay, you will not be able to edit. If you do captioning's request, then you can edit. You can edit the captions, which is pretty neat. All right, so that's Studio, okay. Now let's talk about the Canvas Media Player. So that is the native, um, the native, uh, um, the native um, media player in Canvas. So this is a little bit different. Um, and let me just go ahead and scroll down. So I have this page all prepped up for you. And I'm going to play this video and you'll see where the captions. So I've already added the captions, but I'll go through the workflow in a second. I just wanna show you um, what, what we'll end up with. So I'll play a little bit. Customize the color of your divider by changing the hex color code. Every color has a unique hex color code to find a custom hex. Okay, so notice how, and let me just grab the tool here. Um, notice how it's kind of taking what, like two thirds of your content here. So this is this is something important. Um, when, when we upload videos or when you're working with faculty and uploading videos and, and using the native Canvas media player, keep in mind that this, the, the caption line right here is not going, it's, it's not responsive. So this is what I mean, the smaller the video is, and maybe I can just show you instead of trying to explain show not well. Um, let's see, and this is a little bit tricky, um, but we're trying to get the video here at the video options menu. If I select medium, look at that. So the video is going to generate, we're going to turn on, the English captions. I'm going to press play and look what happens. The color of your it now will take up half of every color the has video. Okay, 
So if so for your mobile users, this is a non issue for your non mobile, you know, for, for, for the students that are using their phones, this is not an issue because when they select play on their phones, it'll automatically go into full screen and the students will be able to see the on screen action and the captions, no problem. So for your phone users, great. For your desktop users, this is problematic. So you can either let the students know above um, for captioning, um, please select the full screen um, tool, okay? Which is, which is this double arrow down below, okay? You can let the students know that beforehand, or you can have faculty um, when they select video options, set the video to extra large. Okay, extra large, or you can also customize it as well. Um, I think 720, whoops, 720 is a pretty good size as well. So for your desktop users, okay, the larger the video is, the better. Okay, all right. So let me show you how to do this. Okay, um, in the rich content editor, you want to select insert insert and then upload record media upload record media let's find your video select open and canvas will have a little checkbox add cc subtitles you're going to select that checkbox and now it gives you an option to choose that caption file. So keep in mind that you will not be able to edit your captions. You cannot edit your captions, but if you have your captions all cleaned up, um, you can upload the captions here. Okay, so select caption file. Here's my .srt, select open. The language is English. I'm going to select submit. Okay, and I think it's because um, I might have to refresh it's unhappy. Let's see. Uh, no, let's start from scratch. Okay. Okay, we'll try it one more time. Okay, select insert, media, upload, record. Um, let's see, get the video, open, add CC, choose caption.srt, select language, English, submit. And the video, the video should appear. Give it maybe a couple, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, there you go. So it'll load, okay, it'll load. Um, unfortunately, Canvas does not automatically turn on that captioning for students. With that in mind, I would highly recommend also letting the students know above, right? So adding that description students to turn to turn on, um, you know, closed captioning, you know, uh, select, select the CCC button, okay? So a description to, to describe what is happening in the video, you know, why it's important, and then, you know, the technical support as well. Okay. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and um, so that that was um, the built in native canvas media player. Okay, it's a lot. It's a lot better. So canvas just updated that. Alright, so let's jump into zoom and I'll show you a demo of what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to select on, okay, let's pretend that you've, you've jumped into Zoom, okay, you've signed into your Zoom account. And um, if this is the first time you've jumped into Zoom, okay, um, you will need to go into the settings, okay? So we'll go into settings on the left-hand menu, and then we'll scroll down to cloud recording and let me pull out my drawing tool you will need to select the checkbox audio transcript okay audio transcript and this is going to help us generate the captioning that we can later edit within zoom okay so you'll have to turn on the settings and if you've done it before 
and you've already turned it on, fantastic. Um, unfortunately, if, if Zoom has updated, it will totally uncheck it. So that happened to me, that happened to me. So don't let that happen. Um, keep in mind, anytime you update the, um, uh, you, you update Zoom, you'll have to go into the profile settings just to make sure all of your settings have been retained. For some reason, sometimes it resets, okay? So we select auto transcript, okay? And then um, you'll jump into recordings once you're done recording the video. And it will give you a list of all of your recordings. And um, so I'll select this video, for example. So we have a shared screen with speaker view, audio only, and now we have that audio transcript, okay? So to edit that Zoom recording, all we need to do is select the video, okay? Testing, testing. And next to, the um, when you when you place your cursor over that uh, that uh, uh, that caption, there's a little pencil that appears. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's all hidden, just to make our lives a little harder, right? Okay, so select that pencil, select edit, and this is where you can edit. Okay, so you can edit your con um, your your transcript from here. Um, unfortunately, you cannot add it. Add new content. So if it's stuck in a line like this, um, hopefully there's more breaks within your, um, uh, when you're speaking in your lecture videos that there will be more lines, okay? So that is how you edit the transcript, okay, in Zoom. Now, let's say you just want to download um, the transcript and you want to host it on YouTube, okay? All you would need to do is download, okay? You would download that transcript. So I'll select the down arrow. And again, Zoom is one of those, um, those uh, platforms where you have to place your cursor over in order to find the, the sub settings, okay? And you'll download that transcript. And then you can upload that transcript into um, YouTube, okay? So that is Zoom. Okay, so we just covered Zoom, how to edit uh, or how to turn on the settings so that uh, we can generate the transcript, how to edit the transcript, right, in the video view, and then how to download, all right? Now, let's go ahead and talk about YouTube. Okay, so if you're using YouTube, okay, uh, for videos that you own, okay, so these are for videos that you owned, okay, go ahead and log into your YouTube account. So if you have a Gmail account, you will automatically have a YouTube account. It's the same company, okay? So if you have a Gmail account, you can use, you can, you know, you'll also have a YouTube account. So all you need to do is just sign in with your, with your credentials. Um, otherwise, you can create a brand new account that is specific to just your lecture content, okay? Um, some schools might have um, Gmail accounts, so you can use your work Gmail account. Um, you might want to check in with your institution. I'm, I'm bumping into some institutions that have both Office and a, sort of like a Google Drive suite. So check in. All right, so let's pretend um, we record a video. Okay, so uh, we've recorded a video, and let's let's just take the. Sorry, I have to pull down the. Zoom menu, it's kind of in my way. Let's pull that down. Um, let's go back into the recordings and, and let's take this um, example here. So I'll just download, well, actually I do have a video that we can use. Let's just use that one. Okay, so I'll upload a video into YouTube. Okay, select upload in the upper right-hand corner and I'm going to select files, select my video. And it will upload. Okay, you can add in the details. One thing that um, you know, you could organize it into different playlists. Um, YouTube wants you to determine or identify whether this video is made for children or not. So I'll select no, it's not made for kids. Select next. And now YouTube has updated its features that you can add videos. Or, sorry, you could add your captions or your subtitles. Okay. Um, 
and there's sort of a these are these are used interchangeably, but closed captions are again captions. Uh, they're they're uh, the words of the dialogue on screen or the sounds that are being heard. Okay, um, subtitles are translations. Subtitles are translations. Okay, so from English to Japanese, Japanese to Chinese. Okay, some some platforms will just use them interchangeably. Okay. Um, so we want to select add under add subtitles and YouTube gives us a couple of examples. Let me grab my annotation tool. You can upload a file or upload a dot um, whatever a dot BTT dot SRT file. You can if you read from a transcript, you can um, write or you can copy and paste your transcript like whatever you read from um, into into YouTube, and let me just show you an example. So if I select auto sync, you could just copy and paste the words that were spoken, okay? And then it'll give you an option to edit the timings, which is kind of neat, okay? Um, let's see what else is there, oops. And then the other, let me just go ahead and just select edit. And then the other uh, caption, whoops. Uh, let's see, can we get back to that feature? Okay, and then the last one was typing it by yourself, but I won't go into that because that's that's a lot of work. I would just, I would highly recommend leveraging auto captioning first. Okay, alrighty. So um, I'll go ahead and X out, and we discard changes. Let me see if I could just delete this. I'll delete this. So I'll add my subtitles. So I have my file um, with timing select. And then I'll use dot SRT select, and then I'm going to select done. Okay, and then I'll just kind of next through, and then it'll it'll take a while. Um, it'll take a while to sync. So just give it um, maybe like depending on how long the video is, it can take maybe like a maybe like a couple of minutes, maybe a couple to five minutes maybe 10 minutes, the, the longest, depends how long your videos are. Okay, so that was YouTube, okay, um, using YouTube. Now, these are for videos that you've owned, and let me just go back. So for videos that you own, you can use, and let me just jump back, you can use um, Canvas Studio um, and uh, Zoom and YouTube to edit the captioning, okay? You could use, Canvas Studio, Zoom, YouTube to edit the captioning, okay? Um, those are for videos that you own, okay? Now for videos that you don't own, you can use, um, let's jump into that, okay? You can use, let me just jump through, since we got that, you, we can use that as reference later, okay? So for videos that you don't own, you can use something called um, a combination of Downsub and Amara. Okay, Downsub and Amara. So Downsub, Downsub is this um, program uh, online that allows you to pull from uh, YouTube and Vimeo. Okay, you would just place the URL there. Okay, select download, and then it will um, it will generate or grab the caption files. So in YouTube, there there will be uh, two caption files, okay, maybe one or two caption files. If the video has captions on it, closed captioning, uh, it will have just a simple English, okay? You might have to edit it, right? Okay. Um, and then we also have a second track called English Auto Generated. So this is YouTube's guess of what the captions are. It's not, um, it's usually not accurate, okay? So we'll first grab in terms of the workflow from downstub and this is for videos that you don't own okay we'll grab the uh, srt file and then we will move it into amara okay um and just just to save a little bit time because i know there was a lot of questions um let's i'll just show you the screen shots here okay so in amara let me take out my drawing tool um when you jump into amara and it's free by the way it's free so you all you need to do is create uh, a, you know, um, um, an account, okay? 
in, in Amara, there will be um, a search feature. All you need to do is add the URL of that, that video that you want. Okay, very much like what we did in Downsub, right? We just kind of copy the URL and the UR, this is the URL right here, for example. Okay, if we were in YouTube, um, copy and paste. And then the video will appear within Amara. So Amara is kind of neat. It's, it's a tool that allows you to overlay captions onto videos that you don't own, as you can see here. Okay, so when you jump into a video, you might be fortunate enough on the left hand side, um, if there's several languages, um, you might see English and then you can just review the English captioning and see like, okay, does this make sense? Like, is it accurate enough, right? Um, and then from there, okay, or if that's, that's uh, ideally what we want to see, okay? So that's pathway A, um, you will have closed captionings available. Um, if not, you may see zero languages and then you might have this option here, add new language, add new language. So that's where um, you can manually um, add in that captioning. Okay, so in Amara and, and um, there's a workspace. Let me see if I can jump in, if we have enough time. Actually um, in Amara, there's a workspace that um, allows you to edit the captioning. Okay, um, from there you could, or, or let, let's just leave it this way. You, you can edit very much like how you can in YouTube. Okay, you can edit that captioning. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, um, so in, if in, in, in Amara, you can use the down sub, and let me go back, the down sub um, dot SRT. Okay, so that captioning file, and you can use it in Amara to start typing in your captions, okay? So you would need to use both Downsub and Amara um, just to help you create the captions and edit the captions, okay? All right. And in Canvas, in Canvas, this is how it looks, all right? Um, so say for example, um, you know, you'll have your description, okay? So you're using a video that you don't own and you've used down sub and Amara to create an accessible video. You have your description. Um, you can say above the video, you know, for closed captioning, watch on Amara. And then this link right here would link out to the Amara closed caption version, okay? That would be the closed caption version. Um, and then you can embed the video, the original video underneath it, okay? Alrighty. All right, so here's a couple of facts. Here's a couple of facts. Okay, so are videos required? So we'll, we'll start with the facts and then we'll jump into, um, we'll jump into the other questions that we have. So are videos required to be open captioned? So in closed caption or in, um, in caption, in the captioning world, there's two types of captions. There are closed captions, which allow you to toggle captions on and off. Okay, so it gives the users that option to turn the captioning on and off. Open captions are captions that live, that are actually burnt on the video. So if we have a video here, the captions are burnt in. So these are non, you cannot edit these. You cannot edit these captions at all. Okay. Um, some pros. Okay, well, if you have the video that has the the burnt in captions that are always there all the time. Um, uh, you can use this video in any platform. So if you if you know you're going to be in a space that has limited um, you know bandwidth and you can't pull from YouTube to turn on the auto captioning, or if you're in the middle of a presentation and you can't pull up that um, captioning, right? You could use a you know the burnt in um, captioning feature. Um, it, it requires a little bit of more work, but you can do it, but it's not required. At the end of the day, the videos just need to be captioned. Highly recommend just using closed captioning if you need to update the content, or if you notice, oh my goodness, I forgot to add that punctuation there. That, that would have been nice to have a period. Um, you can always go back and edit if you have closed captions, okay? So 
are videos required to be open captioned? No, the videos are required to be captioned, ideally in closed captioning. So I recommend closed captioning, okay? Uh, how accurate do captions need to be, okay? And I get this question all the time. Um, you know, folks will, will ask for like, does it need to be 90%, 98%, 100%? It depends on the video. We want to be as accurate as we can to provide students an equal learning environment, okay? There are some, there's some, um, uh, de depends on the discipline, it might be absolutely necessary to have the correct spelling, right, in order for students to use that as reference um, in their textbooks, in their resources. So yes, we need to be as accurate as we can. There are some, you know, that some disciplines that might, you know, it might not be as important for spelling to be um, absolutely immaculate, okay? So we wanna be realistic, okay? I understand there's there's limited bandwidth, right? We're doing the best that we can. Um, I would just recommend if you can, if you have time, create your videos uh, or actually have those transcripts on hand. So those transcripts, remember those, um, it's, the, it's the spoken text, right? So do a, a quick proofread and then have Microsoft Word do spelling, right? And then you can upload that into say, um, you know, YouTube and then you can start editing, right? Um, just, just keep in mind that we want to provide an equal environment as much as possible for our students, okay? Uh, what language are captions presented in? So that would be in the language that um, it's spoken. Right. So if if I'm speaking in English, the captions are going to be in English. OK. Next question, are subtitles the same as captions? So I mentioned this a little uh, a little bit earlier. Um, short story, uh, short, short answer. No, um, they're not. Subtitles are um, are translations. OK, so they will not capture, you know, uh, any relevant sounds, for example. Okay, it's just what it's just the dialogue, but captions will capture sounds will capture um, the dialogue. Okay. Uh, captions are required for ESL students, correct? Okay, captions are required for ESL students, correct? Um, captions are required uh, for pre recorded videos that are going to be used, you know, in your lecture. You know, if you have an identified student, absolutely. Um, it helps our ESL students, but it's not, um, it's not required for ESL students, okay? So we're trying to help in um, our students of disabilities, okay? So these are students who um, cannot hear, okay? But uh, certainly captions can help reinforce some of the concepts, so having um, you know, the, the captionings or the captions in, uh, you know, appear is very helpful. And that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard um, from our, our faculty. Okay. So are auto captions from YouTube or other sources acceptable? Uh, no, not really, right? Um, it depends on the accuracy. It's a good start. Absolutely, it's a good start, but on its own, some like YouTube doesn't really add punctuation, but if you use Studio, for example, it does a pretty good job adding in um, punctuation, okay, um, which is pretty neat. So there's minor edits in Studio, but YouTube has actually come a very long way. Um, it's a close second, it's a close favorite of mine to um, Canvas Studio, all right? All right, so let's let's open up for questions because I know there's a lot of questions. Um, Angela, first first question. Yes, so we've got quite a few in the chat, my friend. Quite a few. Okay, um, as a reminder, we have one minute left. So I'm going to suggest, Liesl, I've documented those questions over to the side. And I think what we should do is follow up and post the question and answer to the VRC. Um, and um, that's, I think, what we should do. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you, everyone. And I know we kind of zipped through the content, um, uh, but I hope this was helpful.
And um, we do have additional notes on the slides as well. So um, if, if there's any um, questions on anything, there, there will be extra um, content in some of the notes. All right, well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and put the slide